education is a big part of me, a big part of what I do, because I believe that children are our future. You should teach them well and let them lead the way. And I don't think I'm the first person to say this. The thing about teaching them is, at least in America, the teaching system is kind of caca. I mean, at one time, the American education system was the king of the world, the one that everyone wanted to be like. But now, it's old and fat and out of shape, and nobody really wants to admit it, but it's clear that the glory days are past, and everyone's got ideas about how to fix it. Some are saying it needs to cut its roots to the industrial age that spawned it. Some are saying we need to privatize it because, well, the business model fixes everything, right? The thing is, unless you've been in the trenches trying to keep the focus and attention of increasingly distracted children, I don't think you're qualified to comment on the situation. Now, I have been a teacher, and I think the solution is simply using the tools that we have to teach more effectively. Use the same technologies that are distracting the students to teach them. I see educational technology on a line that I call the Hanna-Barbera scale. On one end, we have the Flintstones, cavemen grunting their instructions to the tribe. On the other end, we have the Jetsons, where each student puts on a VR headset and gets personalized instruction beamed directly into their brain. And we're, we're still leaning towards the cavemen when we should be teaching like the Jetsons. I mean, come on. This is 2011. 11 years past the future already. Why are we still scratching images on the wall and grunting to our tribe? Granted, our scratchings have evolved somewhat. We've gone from cave paintings to chalkboards to colored chalk, woo, to dry erase boards to overhead projectors that sound like jet turbines to interactive projection boards. You know, those interactive projection boards are actually pretty neat. When I was a teacher, I managed to get one for myself through a lot of hard work on my part, and the result was amazing. I had administrators going through my class like a parade, pointing and saying, wow, look how engaged the students are. You know, this is his first year teaching. Yeah, you wouldn't know it by looking at the students. This is amazing. Why was I so impressive? Well, because despite the fact that I was one teacher in a classroom of way too many students, I wasn't alone. I had the computer with me, and it was doing most of the actual teaching. That freed me up to knock the students' heads together and tell them to get back to work. To me, this is the obvious next step. Let the computers teach the class, and the teachers focus on the students. Teachers aren't going to like it because it means that they get to do less lesson preparation and less lecturing, less of the stuff that feels like teaching. It means shifting the paradigm from teachers teach to teachers facilitate learning, and that's got semantics working against it. But think of the possibilities it opens up. In fact, I want to push it to the step beyond that. What if each student had their own computer instructor? What if the lesson that Billy was learning had nothing to do with what Sally was learning next to him? Tests then wouldn't be get a grade and move on, and if you did poorly, you're going to do poorly from now on. They'd be assessing if you're ready to move on. I'd structure things like this. A short lecture, no more than three minutes, followed by an ungraded sandbox-like activity, though the student is never told that it's ungraded, but they can stay there for as long as they want within some reason and can go back and watch the lecture, and when they're ready, hit them with the test. And if they pass the test, they go on to the next lesson, and if not, they go back to the start. Maybe we could even have three variations of each lesson so that if they have to restart, it doesn't feel like they're restarting, like a video game with branching paths. Actually, you know, this whole thing is kind of video game-like. Start with a tutorial, then the leveling up, then the boss battle. If you lose, you go back to the save point. You know, the vocabulary is completely different, but the idea is there. As an aside, that's what gamification should be to me, not trying to change the way things are to make them more like a game, but using the lessons and templates of video games to identify what's already being done and magnify it. I don't think education needs achievements. They've got gold stars and have for years, but achievements have shown us that everyone still loves gold stars, so don't stop doing them just because you're out of primary school. But I digress. Potentially in this system, you could be studying math in one lesson, finish that lesson up and go straight into social studies or science or language studies. Mix it up so you never get bored. The problem with this is what if the teacher in the room was a math major in college and you've got a question on social studies? Teachers are going to have to branch out. They're going to have to be smarter than their fifth graders. And I want to make clear that this system is not meant to replace teachers or classrooms at all. Yeah, the paradigm is going to have to shift, but I still think we need a teacher in the classroom keeping the kids on task and identifying the students who need more help. Plus, I still think that we need focused labs for collaborative learning. Get the students away from the computers for a period of the day and teach them some curriculum project that takes into account the varying level that students may be at. Get them interacting with other students during the day. Not just science labs anymore, math labs, language labs, social studies labs, electronics, shop. 
I recognize that this entire system is going to cost money. We're going to have to buy the computers, get an IT professional to make sure that they're all maintained, plus the labs that I propose are going to use consumables. All of this is not going to be cheap, but education costs money, and we need to come to terms with that, or I will never be able to enjoy my retirement on the moon like I want to.